from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Medical Mondays. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Medical Monday. I'm Carrie Sharp. So glad you're here with us. This is always an hour of learning, and I want to remind you right off the bat, it is your chance to call in, get some free medical advice for once in your life, and hopefully get some answers to pro perhaps problems that have been bugging you for quite a while. I have a great expert here with me today. Today's topic, by the way, is female urology and chronic pelvic pain. Some of the topics that we don't go around talking about all the time, maybe a little bit embarrassing, Tonight is your chance to call and get some great advice. We have Dr. Barry Jarnigan here. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. You say your patients call you Dr. J. That means you have a good rapport with them. Dr. J. You That's are right. a urogynecologist. That's what, right. What is that? So urogynecology is kind of somewhere in between urology and gynecology. So I'm considered an expert sort of between, I tell ladies between um, the belly button and the knees. So, <laughs> so that's kind of my expertise. Okay, so tell me some of the symptoms, some of the issues that people walk in your office for. So it's, it's kind of generally called pelvic floor disorders, so things that occur in the pelvic floor that are related to the trauma of childbearing or prior surgery mm -hmm. or age related. Uh, but so women can have chronic pain and actually one in four women uh, walking around have chronic pain mm -hmm. at some point in their life. Urinary incontinence, depending on age, one in two to one in three women walking right. around with uh, have urinary incontinence. And then fecal incontinence or the losing stool actually occurs statistically about 18% in the female population. So all these things can be occurring and the, you're right, these are things that women don't talk about and they kind of suffer in silence. And th there's no reason to. There is no reason to because most of the time we can help ladies with minimal treat, I mean minimally invasive treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes no invasion at all or sometimes minimally invasion, we can make them better. You know, and probably, as you mentioned, a lot of women are walking around with urinary incontinence and, and other issues, and they may not know that this is actually a thing, and there are actual treatments to help this thing that they've been dealing with and not telling anybody. Well, that's exactly right, and, and your point is well taken in that a lot of women think it's the norm. Yeah. I'm getting older, so mm -hmm. this happens, and that's absolutely not the case. Pelvic pain, urinary incontinence are never, ever normal. And there's easy things that can be done to fix them many times. Do you find that once women make it to your office, they have kind of at the part where they're pulling their hair out, like, I can't take this anymore, so I'm finally doing something? Yes, absolutely. And, and in the case, particularly of the women who have kind of gotten to the end of their rope, like mm -hmm. the ladies who have pelvic pain, who never thought they were going to be able to get helped, or the lady who's had urinary incontinence for such a long time, may have had other treatments that didn't work, felt like they were going to have incontinence for the rest of their life. They, there are many times women will actually break down and cry because mm -hmm. of the relief of being able to find a way to get help. Well, I want to invite everyone, again, if you have a question that, that covers any of these topics, go ahead and call in tonight. We are waiting for your questions. The number to call is on the screen, 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. And I often find with Medical Mondays, once one or two people call in, people are like, okay, I'm brave <laughs> enough to, to ask my question now. Just go ahead and give us a call. This is, can be an anonymous phone call. Dr. J is here to answer your questions. You have plenty of experience. You've seen it all, probably heard it all at this point, don't you think? There's no question about it. Um, um, I tallied it up I, and looked, I think, unless I miss somebody, I'm not the oldest, but I'm the <laughs> longest acting urogynecologist in the state. Really? And I'm sure you've seen a lot of treatments change over the years. It has changed a whole lot. In, in, uh, in, like in the case of incontinence, it, when I first started, for a particular type of incontinence, I had one medication I could use. Now I have multiple medications, plus I can Botox the bladder, plus I can put in a pacemaker for the bladder. Wow. I've got a whole bag of tricks now that I can pull out and use, and when I first started, I had one drug. One drug, that was yeah. it. Yeah, so it's, the advancement has been significant. Mm -hmm. And probably because so many people are dealing with it and now talking about it a little bit, and of course you see the commercials on TV too. Yes, yes, yeah. and that certainly helped, and the more mm -hmm. 
uh, treatments that there are available and the more people start talking about it, the more other treatments start to occur. Well, let's jump right in. Let's talk about urinary incontinence. There are two different kinds is my understanding. Can you explain that? So there's actually more than two. Okay. So there's, um, there's what's called stress incontinence, mm -hmm. which is the typical is when, when women laugh, sneeze, cough. It's a weakness in the wall of the vagina where the urethra kind of swings. Um, and so that's one kind, and that's primarily related to childbirth or prior surgeries. Then the second kind most common is what's called overactive bladder or urge urinary incontinence, and that's more related to either the muscle of the bladder or the nerves that feed the bladder. And that's where the bladder is just overactive and it's, it is contracting even when the brain doesn't want it contracting. So you may not have a full bladder, but you feel like you have you, to go. You feel like you have to go and your bladder is contracting down and causing it to quote unquote spurt. Okay. Uh, the th third type is where kind of the opposite of that, hmm. where the bladder will not contract at all. And that's so women walk around and the bladder is completely full and it's kind of like you know a cup that's you know when it gets hit it spills sure. and so they leak because of that because it's chronically full and um and they can't empty at all and then there's a fourth kind which is kind of called mixed incontinence it's a mixture of stress and urge and so they have both problems and they're the ladies that come in and i go you know you're not the lady i can do one thing and fix you're gonna mm -hmm. you know we got to fix every issue that's ongoing and but generally we can still get them better and still we can it's minimally invasive it just is going to require two things to do instead of one well let's start talking about prevention if folks don't want to get to this point <laughs> where they're coming to see you is that possible can you prevent incontinence so i wouldn't say you could necessarily prevent it uh, you can certainly reduce the risk okay how uh, because there's there's what's called modifiable risk factors and that is genetics, which of course we have nothing, right. we can't do anything about that. And if you've had babies, you mm -hmm. can't go back and change that. <laughs> Undo that damage, yeah, it's been so, done. And so, um, and so there's, and then there's what has transpired in your life to get there. We know that, for instance, there was a study that showed women who parachuted for a living, uh, it was a military study, uh, even if they'd never had kids, they had an increased risk of incontinence huh. because they were constantly banging when they hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And so behavior that's occurred up until the time they walk in my office. Now all those things are non-modifiable. There's nothing you can do about those. The things that you can modify are, first of all, if you're going to get pregnant, you want to maintain a, a weight, you want to listen to your obstetrician, you want to do all the right things, you want to exercise during pregnancy, you want to have a controlled delivery, um, and so those things are going to offer some value. Um, not gaining a lot of weight, mm -hmm. so keeping your weight down makes a big big difference. Just overall, more Just outside overall. of pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, chronic constipation increases the risk of getting urinary mm -hmm. incontinence uh, and, dis and pelvic floor dysfunction. And so those are all things that you can do to prevent. So keep your weight down, stay active, try to stay in shape to the degree you can, and don't get chronically constipated. And those are things that you can do. And then the other thing is diet. So there are certain things that are irritating to your bladder. And if you eat and drink those, you're more susceptible like to what? having problems. So sodas, sodas mm. are... They're the culprit you know, of everything. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so, you know, if you're a soda drinker, try to limit it. Uh, spicy foods, acidic foods mm. uh, are all things that are kind of are irritative to the bladder wall and can cause it to... Uh, smoking is a big issue, so if you smoke, you should quit. Uh, and smoking is two things. If I biopsy a lady who smokes, you can actually get nicotine in the bladder wall so that's so nicotine kind of hurts the bladder primarily but secondly it causes you to cough and right. so you have a chronic cough and you put chronic pressure yes. to the pelvic floor and so if you smoke you should quit uh, and so those are things and then caffeine is another offender and alcohol is an irritant so if you're going to do those things you want to do them in moderation okay so many questions to sort through, and I know you have some at home, so go ahead and give us a call, 615-737. Plus, we'll get those lined up during the break. Don't be ashamed to ask any question you need to tonight. We're going to get you answers. We're coming right back.